I'm going to just do a quick demonstration of something called Metas Ingest, which is a, a bit of software uh, at Holden we've been doing for a, about six months now, but it's got a new feature, um, which is, is called uh, by some people chase editing, or other people edit while recording. It means you could be at a live event and you could be recording using the computer as a VCR to, to record the event, but also edit it while it's still coming in, while it's still being captured. Which is fantastic for, for for live events, as you can imagine, because you can be topping, tailing, colour yeah. correcting, putting titles on. So the moment the event's over, you can say, right, stop recording now, print to DVD, burn to Blu-ray, send up to YouTube. But it's a complete edit, and you've been editing while you've been while it's been coming in. So Meta says you can see there's two screens there, but you can actually have up to four inputs being recorded simultaneously. Really? Yep. Now you'd have to have a pretty good PC to do this. You'd have yeah. to have something called this, well, a Z820, an HP Z820, so a dual Xeon system. I've got a, a relatively low cost system here. It's a, a Z220, but Dave could probably build something like this for, you know, 1,500 quid or so, which would be able to do two or three streams in real time. And I'm actually recording at. You can set up here what quality you want to record at. Um, if I just go to and if, and I'll start from the beginning. Let's just delete this. So if I go to encoder one, uh, remove encoder. Yes. So encoder two, remove encoder. Let's. If anybody remembers Procoder, do you yep. anybody yeah, yeah. This is this program, Metas Ingest, is a bit like a real-time Procoder. So it records live what you're playing into it through a Blackmagic card and converts it into whatever codec you want on the fly. So as it's recording, it immediately does the conversion. And it does this at a very high quality. So we could choose, first of all, we'll go to encoder, add an encoder. So project, add encoder. So I've got a Blackmagic card with two SDI inputs. So we'll take SDI1, OK. And we want this to be high def. At 1080 25p or 1080 50i. There we go, 1080-50i. Okay. And we've also got the choice of having 10-bit capture, 8-bit or 10-bit capture. So okay. So now we've got this, we can add a um, a profile. So what do we want to come into that SDI2? We choose MPEG2 HD for Blu-ray, MPEG2 SD. Um, DVC Pro, XD Cam, and for this demo I'm going to choose XD Cam uh, at 50 megabits, which is the sort of lowest data rate broadcast codec there is. Yeah. So choose XD Cam, 50 megabits, OK. But we could also, at the same time as that, we could be making up a little H.264 proxy file. So we could choose um, 1080, 25 as well. So we've got as well as our high quality files, we've got some little files which we're going to send up by email or via the internet back to base. So you can go from one SDI source into multiple different formats. Absolutely. As yes, as you're still capturing it. It's very clever. So once you've got this, I'm going to go back to my XD cam thing, and you must have this button ticked: Edit while ingest for EDIUS. If you're using Adobe Premiere, and this works with Premiere as well, you don't need to tick that button, it's just for edits, it needs to have this extra little flag on it. So, click OK. If we wanted to have our other encoder, we just do add encoder from SDI2, and uh, put that on HD as well. And now you see, if we had a second source plugged in, it would appear there. So if you're using what's called a Deckling quad card, a card with four HDSDI inputs, we could be grabbing four simultaneously, as long as the computer is up to the job. Now, you know, as I said, to do four, this is using software encoding. To do four simultaneously in XD cam, you do need a very high-end dual Xeon 16-core system to do it. Okay? So it's not cheap, but you're getting four broadcast quality VCRs all in one unit. And the same unit as you can also be used as your edit system. So, but I'm not using that. I mean, I could do two, two simultaneous on this, and I'm using a Z220, which is an i7. Uh, Dave, how much would you compute an i7 system with a Deckling 
duo card from UB. How much is the duo? Um, the duo is about 300 quid. Yeah, so it's going to be uh, 1500 to 2000. And that would let you do two simultaneous channels. Um, uprate the system, you know, you can do three channels for, you know, add top of range processors. So it, it's, you'd have to ask Dave for an exact quote for what you want to do. But the, the systems we, we've got, which are being used for soap operas and reality TV shows, which are recording four simultaneously, they're, they're based on a Z, in fact, a Z620 system, which is a dual Xeon. And off the top of my head, the computer costs about three, three and a half thousand pounds. Then you need the Metas Ingest software. A single channel is about seventeen hundred pounds, and then to add another channel, it's another four hundred pounds. So you know, it does mount up, but what you're able to do is, is multiple recordings into whatever format you like. It's like a VCR that one day could be doing Panasonic formats, ABC Intra, the next day it could be doing XD Cam, or it could be doing simultaneously two channels into XD Cam and two channels into ABC Intra for, for different people. So it's very, very flexible. It could also be Flash. Uh, for for the internet or for, for YouTube, you can make up an H.264 or you can make a low-res proxy, you can do AVID DNX format. It will do anything apart from ProRes, unfortunately. But we have another system that does ProRes. So, anyway. so um, to start recording, I just click Start. And as you can see, the audio levels are here. This is from this camera and it's taking the embedded audio from that. And then in EDIUS, I can just go to my EDIUS screen, wake it up, and ah, there you go. I always do this. Because I set up a new profile there, let's just stop encoding. You just have to tell it where to put this. So I go on encoder one, I need to edit my profile. So I need to just tell it where to put it in output. You see, at the moment it's going to D Drive Ireland because that's what the default is, but I want to put it in DVC. To computer, D drive. I made up a little folder called DVC. You can obviously put it where you like. You could also put it anywhere on a network. So if this computer is networked to big hard drives, you can set it to any network drive. So there we go. It's okay. Just make sure. And now go back to EDIUS and oh, start recording. You can start either a single recorder channel, or you can start all and stop all simultaneously. You can also press split, and it will uh, it will just do a frame accurate split wherever you pressed it and make two different files. But you can just record for hours and hours. This could record for 8, 10, 12 hours, no problem at all, as long as you have the hard drive space. So back into EDIUS, double click, and that third file, which says it's 0 kilobytes, is on the timeline. That's us. And of course, there's a bit more now because I've yeah. been talking. So I can stretch it out. And there it is. And of course, there's a bit more now because I've been talking. So I can stretch it out again. And there's David doing what he just did. And we can be colour correcting this, I mean obviously it's a bit dim, so we can be going into our effects and we'll just go to colour correction and put a bit of a YUV curve on it and uh, that's, so YUV curve, where's my info tab? It's still up this next to the source browser. Pardon? It's oh, in the right. same panel. Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much. Info, and we can just increase the, yeah, just pump it up a bit like that. And I'm doing that on a file, and of course, there's a bit more because we've been doing stuff. Uh, but there it is with a with a color correction. The flickering you're seeing is because this is running 60 hertz, so it's a sort of 60 hertz flicker thing. But we could be adding titles to this. We could be doing whatever we like, and it's all happening in real time. Yeah, the flickering is called by the video projector yeah. going right. across, is what yeah. you're just saying. Because actually, if you look at what the, the camera is filming and putting on the internet, it is flickering a bit. It's not. So, a uh, great title in one teacher. Do do so, it shows the last time I used Edius because I always let you do the demos now. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you've got real time editing, and of course, because we've had longer, we can now do that. We can cut the end off this, and we can make that slow motion. 
So you could be doing a, a football match, whatever you like, um, and you could actually be um, the doing a half-time edit of what's happened the first time. I'm just doing a slow mo on this now. You could be doing a, a half-time edit while the first half's still going off, just marking ins and outs, choosing bits of the shot you want. And all the time in the background, it's churning away recording, and you've got a broadcast quality master. So you could, for safety, leave leave uh, your cameras running with me during the camera, so it's recording there too. But you've got the ability to edit so much faster like this. Mm. And as I said, multi-channel, so you've got mm. you can have all three or four cameras. And you, then instead of a vision mixer, where if you get it wrong, you, that's it. With this, you've got all the time to make the decision of which camera you want to you want to cut to. So, <coughs> a really clever little bit of software. And the output to the monitor there is coming from the same card that's doing the capture, isn't it? Mm. <coughs> John, rubbish with that lunch, I just had a bite of biscuit. Um, so, so you, as you can see, we've got this on slow mo at the end, and it's still outputting through SDI to this monitor because we, from a one Blackmagic camera, uh, sorry, card, which we've got two inputs live with Deppling Duo, we've also got um, one live output, which can all work simultaneously. So we could have four inputs and still use one output for EDIUS, so we could be watching on an SDI monitor. So admittedly, you know, as I say, it needs a powerful system to do four channels, but that system also becomes yeah. your edit system. And if you take a system like that to an event, uh, and you've got something like the speed sync in order to accelerate the Blu-ray rendering. You could be rendering a DVD or a Blu-ray and giving it to people as they leave a performance, if, if yeah. you're fast enough. So, uh, a old, lot of... Uh, old, a new lot of of multitasking. old new view of multitasking. It was interesting, Andy Nichols was here earlier on from Latest TV, who won the Brighton TV franchise for the local TV yeah. thing. And he's really interested in this because they can do a news program and they can they can mix it, they can do everything with it, but they've got the chance to top and tail it and do it yeah. properly and get it out um, with just a very short delay. So interesting yeah. concept. Having but, come from a news mixing background, that could be powerful. And Reuters are using it at the moment as well. Reuters have this recording their sort of global feeds um, on a system recording two or three feeds. And uh, that's recording into um, their format of choice, which is 50 megabit ABC intro. Um, and again, it's constantly churning away, constantly recording this feed, and they're able to mark ins and outs, uh, you know, work with it at any time, even though it's still coming in at the same time. You see, I've left this recording, so now it's just changed. It's not more. Yeah. There we go. It's still still coming in and you just uh, somebody said earlier doesn't it automatically extend and it, it doesn't mm -hmm. you have to extend it but if you think if it automatically extended you know that could oh, be that, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah exactly yeah. and you need to be in control when you do that because then I can just take that file again from a different place and pop it uh, oh that's my title take that file from a different place and just pop it there and, and work with it again so so Editing while recording or chase editing um, using edits. This will work with Adobe as well. Any avid editors, there's a system we've got called Quadrus, which is a bit more money. Um, you know, it costs not hugely more, but you're looking at about eight or nine thousand quid for a four-channel recording system. But that integrates beautifully with both Final Cut Pro and Avid because it records. Um, uh, into straight into Avid Unity, their sort of high-end storage systems. It makes it a much more broadcasty product. Whereas Metis is um, will record into to Avid formats, but it can't quite get the integration into Avid in the same way. With Quadrus, we can make a multi-cam project up. So, so if you've got four cameras coming in and the a guy on the vision mix is making a decision, it can make a project up. So you've got the vision mixer's idea of what the program should be, but the ability to change any of the cameras afterwards, which is that mm. sort of powerful feature. And those quadrus is being used in sitcoms, not sitcoms, in soap operas and things, for getting production sped up. So you're not having to take something out of the camera and going and running away, you're actually recording the feeds constantly as they're coming off the cameras. So, clever system, and I think it glimpses into how we'll all be doing it in the future. 
So when you know complaints about the cost of media for P2, this is one way of offsetting it. But certainly for live events, the fact you're you're just uh, you're recording live and editing live. So that's my that's my quadra stuff. Let me just come out of NDS. And that's also available for Final Cut. Yeah, well, the problem, it will work, it's only PC based, oh. but the problem with um, Final Cut is you can't do ProRes in Metis, and Final Cut obviously likes ProRes. You could do XD Cam, and Pro, mm. you know, Final Cut likes that too, if you find that. So, uh, mm. But it doesn't do ProRes, and a lot of people want it to do ProRes, whereas the Quadra system does do ProRes. But did you say this is only PC based? Yeah. So you wouldn't be able to use it and edit in Final Cut at the same time? No, oh, that's very mm -hmm. true. Yeah, that's very true. It is only PC, yeah, you'd have to have a separate Mac.